Um, we want to look at square root of 16 for a second. Um, we all know what that is. Of course, square root of 16 is 4. And why? Well, because 4 squared gives me 16. Um, we could also even really think about it as being negative 4 squared would give us 16 as well. But is there any way I can square something and get negative 16? In other words, the square root of negative 16, can we do it? No, because um, it had to be a positive times a negative, and that doesn't work. So mathematicians hate being told that something's impossible. So when we're told that this is something that we're not going to be able to do, we invent a way to fix it, to do it, to make it work. Now, amazingly enough, after we did this, we found out that there are actually applications for, um, for these complex numbers, that's what we're going to call them, uh, in electrical engineering, to so talk about the flow of current through a circuit and that type of thing. But the main reason it was invented um, was so that mathematicians could solve problems that they were told they can't do. So let's think of, we tried to figure out something squared has to equal, let's just start with negative 1. So what squared could equal negative 1? Well, mathematicians decided, let's make up something that if I square it, I get negative 1. That something is called i. i squared is negative 1. Therefore, the square root of i I, the square root of i squared would be the square root of negative 1. So i is the square root of negative 1. i is called an imaginary number. It's not a real number. Mathematicians made it up. It is an imaginary number. Now, we invented it so that we could do things like take the square root of negative 16. So now, square root of negative 16. Well, I know from my rules that I could rewrite that as the square root of 16 times the square root of negative 1. What is the square root of 16? 4. And now I have just decided what the square root of negative 1 is. It's i. I could even have the square root of negative 5. Rewrite it as the square root of 5 and the square root of negative 1, because 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. I don't know what the square root of 5 is, but I'll just write it. Square root of negative 1 is i. So if we do enough of these, you can kind of catch on to a pattern. Anytime you take the square root of a negative number, you can break it apart. And the square root of 9 is 3, square root of negative 1 is i. So anytime you have the square root of a negative number, it's going to be imaginary. Now, we not only made up imaginary numbers, but we said, well, what if we add them to some real numbers? Well, if we do that, we get what is called the complex numbers. Complex numbers are part real and part imaginary. So there's always going to be a part, maybe a number here, and then an imaginary part. And there could be a coefficient here, it could be minus. It's okay. But we've got a real part and an imaginary part. So let's look at each of these three numbers and figure out, is it real, imaginary, or complex? Negative 7i. Well, that's imaginary. It's got an I. 12. Oh, I know that one. That's a real number. 1 plus 3i. I've got a real plus an imaginary. That's complex. Now, mathematician said, well, while we're at it, we have the coordinate planes and the real number line. Let's make up a complex plane because we like to graph. We like to see things visually. So on a complex number plane, we can plot complex numbers. Now, the real 
part is being demonstrated by a horizontal axis. The imaginary part would be represented by a vertical axis. So, negative 5 plus i. It can be negative 5 parts into the real world plus only one part into the imaginary world. So let's look at where that would be. Negative 5 into the real world. So we start at the origin. Reels are going left and right. So negative 5 would be a left move. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 parts negative real plus 1i. That'd be right here. The next one, 3.5i. Well, here's my imaginary. It says I'm only 3.5 into the imaginary. 1, 2, 3, and a half. C equals negative 2. That is just a real number. So it's just on the real number line. Well, we know where negative 2 is on the number line. 2 minus 3i. 2 into the real and negative 3 imaginary. 1, 2, 3. 